the uranium mining and milling legacy in New Mexico dates back to the early uh, 50s, late 40s, when the U.S. government was trying to find uranium for nuclear weapons. And it sponsored exploration programs and paid a guaranteed price. And all uranium uh, was owned by the government. There was no commercial market at those times. And uh, that uranium uh, first uh, boom was when that guaranteed price existed. And then when the price uh, supports ended <coughs> in 1966, that was when the first uranium price bust occurred. In the early 70s, there was a speculation that there'd be a large number of nuclear reactors built. Uh, 500 to 1,000 were proposed. A lot of uh, uranium was thought to be demanded. Only 109 were built, and so the demand uh, never materialized, and the price fell. Now, uh, 20 years later, there's also discussion of a new nuclear renaissance, and that's boosting the price uh, during the uh, 19, uh, uh, during the 2004 to 2007 period. However, by 2007, it was clear that the nuclear industry had identified all the uranium it could need, and the price began to fall even more steeply than it rose. And now the price, uh, March 1, is $40.50. In June of 07, the price peaked at 137 so it's at the time of that peak price that Virginia uranium uh, re-emerged uh, from the dustbin where the documents had all been uh, stored and the company was basically uh, moribund, basically just on life support, and then recreated with the same principals who were active in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Norm Reynolds, Walter Coles Sr., Walter Coles Jr., there the... Uh, core of Virginia uranium and they were the core of Marline uranium when it was uh, proposing development of the project in the early 80s. So that uh, demand uh, uh, for uranium is uh, uh, smaller than supply, either supply in terms of current capacity to produce or supply in terms of the resource available for long-term exploitation. So there's not much shortage of uranium that can be identified. The people who are trying to explore for uranium now or develop new deposits, they're small companies, generally speaking, which don't have uranium production capacity or uh, uranium production uh, financing. And they're trying to convert their deposits into operations or sell them to investors. So the, and those are called juniors, uh, junior uh, exploration companies. And Virginia Uranium, as was Marline before, is a junior in that it's got deposits with uh, exploration data, but not a proven deposit from an uh, uh, economic mining standpoint, not proven that they can make a profit by mining. So they're seeking investors and seeking support, even though the price has been dropping the last three years pretty continuously. Where, uh, the recent uranium mines that have been operated in this country have all been permitted based on a, a proposal for continuous operation until the deposits are exhausted. But actually the facilities have stopped and started with price. So e if uh, a facility were to be funded and permitted and constructed. The price environment doesn't provide much hope for sustained operations. So there'd be stop and start operations. There'd be uh, an open pit and waste rock piles that would be venting radon gas and uh, particulate dust sources. And the tailings uh, pond at the mill would be growing and is likely to be uh, uh, manage in a way where it can have its waste covered by water which prevents radon release and uh, the mine waste is not. So during operations the mine waste and the pits are likely to be major sources of radon compared to the mill. The uh, mill waste management 
because there have been so many problems in the past, has received much more attention than the mine waste management. The mill waste management is regulated by the Federal Atomic Energy Act and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The mine waste is not effectively regulated at all, and the NRC uh, ignores mine waste and the hazards associated with mines.